Hello, this is Mark from I Am Organic Gardening, located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey. And welcome to part three of how to grow nutrient-dense fruits and vegetable garden series. And in today's video, I want to go over a little bit of a continuation about that living root in the ground. But the main purpose of this video today is I want to get a large soil sample from the garden, which I'm standing in front of, my kitchen garden. And I want to show you how soil breathes. I'm able to collect that soil sample because I put down a foot thick uh, layer of fall leaves on top of the soil so the soil will not freeze. The soil that's not covered in the garden is uh, completely frozen to at least four inches thick. And also too I was able to plant up that fruit tree in front of you which is a grafted fruit tree that has four different varieties of apples on it. And here's the varieties that are going to be on that tree in the future. There's four different types. So I'm excited to see how all those different varieties grow on one single uh, tree and all those branches of different varieties of trees are grafted onto that single stem. So now let's click that soil sample. So to get my soil sample, I'm going to push aside these leaves that are about a foot thick and I'll get down to that soil and we'll cut a piece out and bring it inside and we'll examine it a little bit further. So I was able to get a nice sample out here that I could bring inside and in today's video I want to show you how soil breathes. But first I'd like to continue some very valuable information that should have been covered in part two and that is sequestering carbon in a soil. Now the only way we can do that is have our living plant material on top here and then through the root system because that's in part two I was talking about the exudates that the roots exude exudates in the soil and feed the whole soil food web but it's also sequestering carbon and what carbon is it's the it's the bank in the soil and what this does is that it it just builds up that carbon in case of emergency and helps that soil food web in case there's a major disaster that carbon is being banked in the soil instead of in our atmosphere it's supposed to be in our soil helping that soil food web to grow it can be used as food later on and it's also used as a general uh, purpose to keep the soil open and give it structure now you're not going to be able to do that as much when you use peat moss and perlite mixed in the soil again can you grow things in that material you're not going to achieve the same result when you're using peat moss and perlite mixed together to sequester that carbon. The plant's still going to do that function, but it's not going to stay inside this uh, growing medium. For the simple reason is that this medium itself will be eaten by the bacteria and the fungi and release a CO2 gas back in the atmosphere. And when that carbon is hooked onto it, that carbon is also going to go back up thus defeating the whole purpose. You're going to get the same result in using compost. Can you grow in compost your vegetables? Yes, but that compost again is going to release carbon dioxide back up in the atmosphere after it decays and very little of that organic matter is going to go into your soil. The richness in that soil is not organic matter that you see. It's a small percentage. It's actually the carbon being sequestered by the plants. Only plants helping with the soil food web can build soil. We can add things to the soil, but we can never build soil. So on this quest of mine to understand how I can grow nutrient-dense fruits and vegetables, this is something that it, it just kind of always irritated me a little bit, is that it's not bad, and I understand why people do it, and I've done it myself and use this media all the time, but do you realize that you can take this uh, peat moss and perlite, add it to a clean pot, and this is a growing medium now, as long as it's uh, OMRI certified, Organic Material Review Institute, that certified organic soil, technically not soil, uh, basically they call it soil, but that this could be your growing media. You can come along with some let's say organic fertilizer, certified organic fertilizer and add that, mix that in and then plant your seeds in that and grow 
and you have a certified organic plant, let's say you grew some basil seeds, you would have certified organic basil you can sell. Now, do you, I, the way I look at it, why would I want something that's grown in this pot with these two types of materials? Am I going to get the same type of minerals out of that between adding these two ingredients to get me that plant that's certified now by the U.S. government, or do I want to grow that same thing in real soil, accessing the whole soil food web, all the minerals in here, that all 92 of them, that it needs at any time it wants, growing a nice, live, healthy plant on top. I believe that this is going to be a lot more nutrient-dense here in real soil than this ever can be growing in that. That carbon being sequestered in that soil is more important than the organic matter in it. So here I have my large soil sample that I got early in the video from outside. Uh, I have it standing upright in a tray for us to see, a better example. Now, I want to show you how critical it is for soil to get new air and how it breathes. Now this is done by several, by, by two processes by sure. But also, when all this soil, when you have a living root in here, it's going to build soil aggregates, which I'll get to later on in other future videos. Now, this is just, I found, very interesting how nature has adapted to bring in air with that nice, open, porous soil. And let me just demonstrate it to you what's going on. Now I'm going to use this blue piece of plastic to demonstrate what the rain does or a large amount of irrigation does. Now, we'll start at the top, and when now when it rains, and all that water is going through the soil slowly down and filling up all those pores to feed our plants here, and it ends up at the bottom or through, what has happened, and what our rain has done, when it's gotten to the bottom and has filtered through our soil, it has created a suction to bring in fresh air all the way down too. It's pulling it down. It's like, um, almost like a straw effect where you just apply pressure at the bottom and it pulls down all that air, giving all that life new air so it can breathe once again in larger capacity. Now, it survives on small amounts of air, but if you ever notice after it rains how everything just perks up again, because that air has been cycled down, giving it more life. And when it has more air, it creates more life, things reproduce, and everything just bursts back into action again, and that whole soil food web is growing. And the other way it works is that a lot of people with sandy soil that are close to the shore or within just about, it, like say, uh, less than 200 feet of soil that they have, the tide with the moon effect will bring that tide up, and it's not in your soil, but down very far below in the soil, will push back up the air out of the soil, and then when the tide goes back down again, it will also be creating a suction effect, bringing in fresh air once again. Now I want to discuss what we're going to be going over in part four. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it a part four. It's just going to be a speech by a very famous soil scientist that's going to explain and give proof that she has uh, gone over and researched, and there's lots of papers out there. She has every degree possible. But what she states in this speech that I'll, I'm going to show you in uh, part four, or continuation of part three, is that all the material that you have here has enough minerals in it to provide all the nutrients that possibly your plants will ever need in the future. And I originally, when I heard it, I was like, there's no way. I'm always taught you have to add things to the soil. You have to always add um, your minerals. You have to add your compost and everything else too. Now, again, those two other farmers in video part number two showed you that they just have nothing but clayish soil or a soil in their ground. And they're not adding any type of minerals or nutrients to it. The other farmer is slightly increasing his yield by adding a little bit to it, but not a lot to, and he's playing around with the idea, you know, what can I do to my soils to enhance a little bit more? It's not the mineral. I think he's just using a little bit of nitrogen fertilizer just as a test to see what's going on. But all this parent material here is 
going to give you all the nutrients or the minerals that you need that can change into nutrients through that whole soil food web to produce what your plants need all the time. And what this means is that you do not have to go out and collect leaves or do anything else too. As long as you continue to grow a living root in the ground and add a little bit of, like say, covering to the soil over winter, that this will produce enough food for you in the future by just maintaining the health and the soil food web of the soil. Again, when you have this material here, your peat moss or uh, let's say artificial soil with minerals in it, you always, again, like I said, you have to always add minerals to this because they're going to be depleted. And that's what the other soil scientist is going to say. Not until you run out of all this material here that you are going to deplete your soil of minerals. I know it's a highly uh, big claim. I was always confused by it or there's no way because, again, for the last uh, 40 or 50 years I've been doing this, there's nobody has ever mentioned that there's enough minerals in my soil. It's always a depleted resource, and basically I always have to fix it and add new minerals to it every year. I want to thank you very much for watching today's video. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. And remember, anytime you plant up a fruit tree or other type of uh, perennial roots in your garden, that helps that soil to breathe and also grow mycorrhizal fungi in the soil. It's a double benefit of any plant that you keep a living root in the ground all that time. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you can, please like it, and it will help out my channel immensely. And I thank you again, and I will see you shortly with part four.